So, good evening class and today we will uh, we are at lesson 8 and lessons 8 and 9 will be concentrated on the topic of contracts. So, na discuss na natin yung uh, yung obligations in general uh, for the past uh, 7 lessons and as you know, gaya nga nung nasabi natin during the uh, second lesson that uh, one of the sources of obligation is contracts. So here in contracts, uh, we will be we will be discussing a very specific type of obligation, uh, and perhaps the most common of all the sources of obligation. So uh, what are contracts? What are the basic principles guiding the idea? or guiding the right to enter into contracts, etc. Uh, yun yung magiging topic natin for tonight. Okay, so uh, I I will discuss this as if it's, a con if it's continuous, pero hati-hati na lang natin sa later. Okay, there are five basic principles na, na, uh, na nag-guide sa atin on, uh, on the concept of contracts. Before we uh, before we get to define it, uh, doon sa mga susunod na slides, uh, siguro it's important for us to understand na itong basic principles na to ay ang uh, ay, ay meron sa or existence sa lahat ng contracts. So um, first is autonomy. So uh, autonomy is the freedom to stipulate. Provided that they are not contrary to law, morals, and good customs, public order, and public policy. So, dito, sa autonomy, sinasabi dito that uh, all, both parties in the, all, or all the parties in the contract have the right to stipulate. Or may karapatan sila na maglagay ng terms and conditions na gusto nila sa contract. Okay? So, uh, they are autonomous in that sense. Ano? na pwede silang maglagay ng kung anong gusto nilang maging terms and conditions ng kontrata. But there is a limitation under the law. No? Uh, other limitation is that provided they are not contrary to law, morals and good customs, public order and public policy. So, okay lang daw na mag-stipulate ang mga parties or to uh, for the parties to agree on certain terms and conditions except those which are contrary to law morals and good customs, public order, or public policy. Now, there are certain types of contracts that are prohibited by law. Ano? Uh, for example, um, contracts uh, with illicit, uh, na ang object ay illicit, maganyan. Or they're contrary to morals or good customs, like... <clears throat> contract concerning uh, things that are considered immoral or uh, for example contracts governing uh, for now kasi ano no in illegal pa siya contracts concerning uh, yung ano yung f flesh trade mga ganyan. good customs or public order or public policy if uh, it is contrary to all of these five uh, to either of these five, rather, uh, it's uh, it's not a va va it's not valid as a contract. Kasi hindi niya na fulfill yung concept ng autonomy. Okay? Uh, so, next we have consensuality. In consensuality, uh, contracts are perfected by mere consent. So, uh, just by saying, uh, just by saying, just by agreeing with the terms and conditions at nagkasundo na kayo, the contract is already perfected by them. Okay? So, again, uh, perfection is uh, dependent on the consent itself only. Ano? So, kapag nagkasundo na kayo over the terms and conditions of something, yung nagkasundo na kayo sa object at consideration ng isang, uh, ng isang, ng isang contract, it's already considered as a contract itself. There are exceptions, of course, like uh, yung formal contracts natin which require a certain form in order for it to be perfected. But otherwise, as a general rule, uh, contracts are perfected by the mere 
uh, consenting of the parties. And third one, we have uh, mutuality. In mutuality, uh, it says here that the contract must bind both contracting parties. Its validity cannot be left to the will of one of them. Kumbaga, uh, whether a, con a valid is contract or not should depend on both the parties. Yung hindi pwedeng uh, maging valid siya because one liked it and one doesn't. Ano? Uh, hindi, hindi, siya, hindi siya mutual in a, uh, kung ganun kapag uh, yung isa lang yung may uh, right to, ano, to determine kung valid ba yung contract kung yung ano uh, yung de to determine the validity of the contract. So, uh, the, the both parties must consent. Both parties must give their consent. Otherwise, it's not mutual. Another, uh, another basic principle of uh, on contracts is obligatoriness. By obligatoriness, we mean that contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties. Kung baga, uh, here, uh, the two parties have uh, parang uh, have agreed on certain terms and conditions therefore yung terms and conditions na yon uh, is what governs the parties in uh, in in uh, in that relationship that they created through the contract so uh, whatever uh, if there are doubts i mean if there are if the parties are not sure uh, on what their obligations are under the contract well they just have to look in uh, into the you know if there is a written document that that evidences the contract, they can look into it. Ano the dun yung mga obligations nila sa isa't isa. So uh, again, yung uh, contracts have uh, uh, at are is the law between the two uh, between the two parties, and because of that, uh, they must observe this uh, these contracts and the uh, stipulations in uh, therein with uh, with uh, they must perform their obligations rather in the contract in good faith. So performance in good faith is uh, part of yung obligatoriness nitong contracts. So again, uh, the contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties. And uh, finally, we have relativity. Con uh, in relativity, it says here that contracts have if, uh, ha take effect only between the parties, their assigns and ears, except where the obligations arising from contract are not transmissible by their nature, by stipulation, or by provision of law. So here, uh, yung con the, the contract only binds the, the parties. Ano? Dahil nga, sila lang yung nandun sa kontrata. So anyone who is not a who is not privy to that contract uh, may, uh, may not be affected by that same contract. Uh, except when, for example, through uh, due to some causes, eh, the ano, the the person is not uh, able to carry out his or her obligations in the contract. Nandito yung kanyang assigns and ears. Pero well, uh, may mga limitations yan later on. Uh, except of except where the obligations arising from contract are not transmissible by their nature, by stipulation, or by provision of law. So, sinasabi dyan na uh, although uh, minsan may mga times na pwedeng uh, maisali yung mga successors in interest nila or yung mga, mga anak nila or yung mga tagapagmana nila, there are obligations that are not transmissible by their nature, by stipulation or by provision of law. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, it's only between the contracting parties. Okay? So as again as a rule uh, yung the contracts take on, take, take between uh, take effect only between the parties. And uh, and sometimes there are signs and heirs kaya nga sabi, kaya nga may exception din na ano there are some contracts which are really not uh, the, the, may not be transmissible because of their nature by stipulation or by provision of law. So again if you're not a party to the contract you have no uh, it, it there can be no obligation that will arise from that. Okay? So, yun yung basic principles natin ng contracts. So, uh, in defining contracts, we need to take, uh, we need to look at yung essential requisites nito. 
what are these essential uh, what are these essential requisites ito yung tatlong uh, ito yung tatlong mga dapat nating tingnan in order to uh, consider a contract uh, in order to consider whether something is a contract or not meron ta, uh, ang ano niyan ang ano ta, ang ang acronym niya is COC of course during the time uh, when or in law school madali lang yan because uh, clash of clans yung ano namin yung uh, mnemonic namin diyan but COC uh or clerk of court pwede rin <laughs> COC uh, so COC stands for consent object and cause so there uh, in order for something to be considered as contract it must comply with these three requisites in the uh, in the succeeding uh, powerpoints we will discuss one by one kung ano ibig sabihin nitong consent object object and cause so if uh, if the con if uh, something does not uh, if an, if a relation does not have uh, yung consent or yung object or yung cause hindi siya mapo-consider as contract and therefore not covered by the the law on contracts so yeah so first is consent in consent uh, in consent meron tayong uh, meeting of offer and uh, meeting of offer and acceptance upon the thing and the cause which are to constitute the contract so uh di ba matatandaan niyo si oc yun ano uh, consent object and cause or consideration so in consent yung ano uh, if the two parties agreed on the OC yung object at yung ano uh, object at yung consideration ng contract that is already a consent meeting of the minds ang tinitingnan natin so if both uh, if both agreed on uh, uh, if both agreed to as to the object or and the and the consideration that is already considered as consent and it completes the yung tatlong contracts na tinatawag na ay, tatlong essential requisites ng contracts so uh, for example uh, if i say na oh uh, i offered you my phone sabi ko sa iyo uh, bili mo tong phone ko 2000 if you said uh, okay sige bilhin ko na there is already a meeting of the mind so we agree on something you know we agreed on something so uh there's already a, already a meeting of the mind pero uh meron na bang ano doon meron na bang meron na bang object yung cell phone right and yung co consideration yung 2000 so there is already a meeting of the mind and there is a con there is consent so there is a contract that is perfect okay so uh consent must be absolute and unqualified yung consent na ibibigay mo kailangan uh, absolute hindi pa din yes pero kasi ganyan ganyan absolute dapat yes or no di ba yung consent must be yes pala rather kasi yes lang yun kapag no there's no consent to, i mean you did not consent to the contract therefore there's no contract so uh, it must also be unqualified uh, hindi pa din sabihin mo na okay bili mo na tong phone ko 2000 mahal naman Hindi ba pwedeng 1-5? Is that consent? No. Uh, since that is a qualified consent, oo, kung sa kung sabi mo, oo, kung 1-5, bibiling ko yan. Is that consent? Not yet. Ano? So, walang meeting of minds. Kasi siya, ang gusto niya, 2,000. Ang gusto, uh, ang gusto mo, 1-5. So, there's no meeting of the mind there. So, ano yung tawag natin doon sa 1-5? That is what is called a counter offer. Ano? So for example, binigay ko sa yung phone, ah uh, sorry, ah uh, binibenta ko sa yung phone ng 2000, sabi mo 15, no meeting of the minds yet, ano? Kapag sinabi mo 15 at sabi ko, um mm, sige na nga, 15 na lang. Bili mo na. There is already a meeting of the mind there, but the meeting of the mind is at a cert, at the at the consideration na 15, not the 2000 original price. There must kailangan merong meeting of the minds before it can be considered as valid consent. Ano? So also uh, in consent, we must take note of yung legal capacity ng parties. Ano? 
uh, as a rule sa under our civil code uh, yung uh, a person has the legal capacity to act or to legal capacity to enter into a contract kapag 18 years old siya so as a general rule uh, pwede lang mag-enter into a contract ang isang tao if uh, he or she is 18 and above so um uh, well may mga exceptions of course there are exceptions na kahit na hindi siya 18 ay uh, pwede pa ring maging valid yung contract but those are limited to what are called necessaries uh, I, 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 unfortunately we will not touch them in this subject but uh yun so legal capacity of parties um, so a person who is incapable or or below 18 or a minor nga na sinasabi natin is incapacitated to enter into a contract. So, a, a person who is below 18 cannot give consent validly. Ano? So, since hindi siya valid, uh, hindi siya pwede makapagbigay ng valid consent, he is incapable. Tingnan nyo sa note na kalagay. Incapability. Uh, inca incapa uh, sorry, incapacity rather. And so, in incapacity, since incapacitated siya, we will learn later on that Yung contract is not really void, hindi siya, hindi, hindi siya void, but it's voidable. Ano? So, that is incapacity. Pero meron din tayo mga tinatawag na prohibitions. Ano? Uh, there are prohibitions sa batas na kahit na legally ka pa, ay kahit na sabihin natin na 18 years old and above sila, may mga provisions sa batas that prohibits them from entering into certain types of contracts. For example, uh, husband and wife, cannot uh, a husband and wife cannot enter in uh, cannot donate to each other ano? so we we need to think uh, we need to ano we need to keep uh, keep that in mind kahit pa sabihin natin na ano uh, kahit na sabihin natin na they are above 18 pero may mga certain prohibitions under the law na kailangan nating i-take note okay and finally, the uh, consent must be intelligent, free, spontaneous, and real. So, it must be intelligent, free, spontaneous, and real. So, kailangan uh, napag, napag-isipan yung consent. It must be intelligent. It must be free. Hindi, ibig, sabi, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pinikot to, to enter into a contract. For example, tinutukan ka ng barel, mga ganyan. Those are... Uh, those are not allowed. And it must be spontaneous. And and it must be real, of course. Kailangan, ta, par, kailangan ano, real yung consent. Hindi siya simulated. Kung baga, pinapalabas na ganito, pero actually, uh, iba pala yung intention. Ano. So, that is on consent. So, uh, yan. For consent to be considered intelligent, free, spontaneous, and real, it must not have the following vices or uh, vices of consent. So, uh, bago daw natin consider na ang, ang consent na intelligent, free, spontaneous, and real, it must not have the following vices of consent. Ito yung mga yung vices of consent na to. Ito yung mga klase ng defect doon sa consent ng isang tao. First, uh, a person cannot validly give consent if he is under duress. Kumbaga, uh, a person, yung kumbaga, hindi matatawag na free yung consent ng tao if he is under duress. So, ano tong tinatawag natin na duress? Uh, sa duress, there is violence or intimidation. So, uh, a person is being intimidated or uh, threatened kaya siya pumasok into a contract. For example, ako. I, I have no intention na bumili, for example, ng isang, isang sing-sing. Pero dahil ano, uh, I was held at gunpoint, tinutukan ako ng barrel, uh, sabi niya, oh, bili mo yan. Pumirma ka din sa, uh, sa deed of sale nung, uh, yung, ano, yung, nung sing-sing. And give me the money. Am I under duress? Yes. Is my consent vitiated? Yes. Ano? So, if you're under the threat of violence or, or intimidation, uh, that is duress and that is a vice of consent. So, parang hindi intelligent, free, spontaneous, and real yung uh, consent mo. And therefore, 
there's no real consent there. There is no uh, there in pa, pa, it's as if the consent is not uh, valid. Ano? So undue influence. Ano naman sa undue influence? Uh, improper advantage of power ang tinatawag natin dito. Kumbaga, uh, napilitan tayo because uh, they are elderly, uh, they are ano, they are of a certain power, uh, position of power uh, in relation to us. Ano? Kumbaga, sinusulan tayo to do something. Which is uh, actually, we only, we only entered into the contract because uh, sinusulan tayo ng isang taong powerful kesa sa atin. So that is ang due influence. Uh, mistake or error, dito naman, uh, hindi yung ano, ito naman, inadvertent, unexcusable disregard of circumstances material to a contract. It is inadvertent, hindi sinasadya. At excusable naman siya. Uh, na disregard of a circumstance, uh, circumstance material to a contract. For example, hindi lang, uh, hindi, you were not expecting that something, ako na rin, uh, you bought a frame, uh, you bought a, bought a frame with a stand, ano, eh, nagka, apa, na, nagkamali ka lang na ang uh, mali yung specifications na nabigay, na, ano mo, na, na nabigay sa'yo. So, that is, uh, that is a mistake, ano. It's an inadvertent, in, or, ano siya, uh, although, that, for example, yung, yung, for example, yung frame ay iba pala dun sa, ano, sa, hindi pala suited para dun sa need mo, mga ganyan, and it was a, uh, and it was a product of mistake, that can be, ano, uh, that can be considered as mistake or error, and can be considered as a vice of consent. If, uh, hindi talaga, uh, nagkamali ka on your, on your side. And finally, yung tinatawag natin na fraud. Or, for example, one party, uh, niloko na yung isang party. Or in fraud, there is uh, insidious words of, or machinations on the part of one of the parties whereby the other is induced to execute without which he would not have agreed. Okay? Uh, so, yung isang party, niloko niya yung isang party para ulit, uh, para, for example, para mag-enter into a contract in where, kung ano, kung, uh, kung, hindi, kung because of yung ano yung fraud kung hindi dahil sa fraud hindi niya talaga bibilihin yung isang bagay at hindi tawag natin na as if you may recall yung sa, sa distinction natin ng dolo incidente at dolo kosante ito yung tinatawag natin na dolo kosante so here walang intention si uh, si for example walang intention si buyer na bumili talaga ng thing na bin, 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 binentahan ng ano uy ano ah uh, Bili ka ng lupa 1,000 uh, square meters, sabi. Mura lang, ganito. Pero later on, uh, malalaman mo pala na either hindi sa kanya yung lupa, mga ganyan, or uh, ano pala, hindi pala 1,000 square meters yun, kundi 100 lang. So, uh, that is that is, a con- that, that, is uh, ano, that is an example of dolo kosante. So, yun. Kumbaga, uh, there is uh, there is panloloko in the first place na kung wal, kung hindi dahil sa panloloko na yun, hindi talaga papasok sa kontrata yung uh, yung tao. So, that is another vice of consent. So, yan. So, punta naman tayo sa second uh, sa second uh, requisite of contracts. So, kanina yung consent eh, uh, consent is more of yung sa ano, more of yung uh, ano, consent is more of psychological ano, kasi there is the meeting uh, because there's the meeting of the minds mga ganyan. and any vice of consent uh, invalidates the consent itself and de- and therefore the contract here's the object we are eh, eh, when we talk of object di ba kung naalala niyo yung sa obligations uh, yung object doon ay to give, to do, or not to do. Uh, similar yun dito sa contracts. Sa so contracts, it could be a thing, it could be rights or services. ba Yung things, rights, services, pwede yung mag-fall under to give or to, uh, to, give or to do. Uh, which is the subject matter of the contract. So, uh, yung kung ano yung subject matter ng contract, yun yung tinatawag natin na object. 
Okay, what do we need to think? Uh, we, what do we need to consider when dealing with uh, with object? Ano? So the object must be uh, must be certain or ascertainable, determinate or indeterminate. Okay, uh, kailangan uh, malinaw kung ano yung object ng contract na pinapasukan nyo. Okay? Because if not, well, uh, pala na, that might not be a valid object to begin with. Ano? For example, uh, oh, bili ka ng, ano, uh, bili, uh, bili ka na ng lupa. Pero you don't know what, what, kung anong lupa yon, kung saan, kung, uh, kung gaano kalaki, walang specifics, ano, hindi mo, hindi mo mga certain. Well, in that case, aling lupa yung binibenta niya, di ba? So, uh, you must be certain kung ano yung object ng object ng contract. Okay, it must be uh, certain or or at least ascertainable. Yung pwede mong, uh, pwede mong, you can separate it from other things. Okay, so it must be within the commerce, within the commerce of men or it must be transmissible. So, uh, hindi mo pwede, for example, ipagbenta ang space because that's not really uh, outer space. Ano? And you can't sell outer space because you don't own it to begin with. And it's not really for sale. It's not uh, within the commerce of men. No? So, uh, it's not transmissible. Kaya hindi mo siya pwede ipagbenta or yung dagat. Hindi mo pwede ipagbenta yung dagat kasi uh, that is outside the commerce of men because that is something that is res communis or it is something that is owned by everyone. So, it's outside the commerce of men. Ito yung tiyatawag natin na uh, ito yung mga bagay na hindi natin pwede ibenta dahil hindi naman sa atin to begin with. No? Hindi mo siya pwede i-transfer because it's not yours. In the case of yung dagat, it's the ownership of everyone. Every, uh, ang paano? Uh, it's, ang paano? It's the ownership of every human being. It must be actual or pos or possible experience. Of course, you can buy something that is a product of your imagination. No, it must be actual. Or it must be some. Uh, it must be capable of existing. Okay. Uh, for example, alang ano mong sabihin mo na ano? Uh, bibenta ka ng angel or bibenta ka ta bibenta ka ta ng unicorn. Those are not actual things. Those are imagined things. So unless they are figurines. Uh, the, those cannot be valid subject, valid, valid objects of the contract. And finally, it must be lawful. It must not be contrary to LMGPP. LM, yung nakita na natin kanina, yung LMGPP, Law, Morals, Good Customs, Public Order, and Public Policy. So, uh, an, an illicit thing or isang bagay na illegal cannot be the object of a contract. Nasabi na natin yan kanina, ano? Uh, nabanggit na natin siya. So, uh, hindi pwedeng maging subject ng valid contract ng isang ng drugs, mga ganyan, because it's against the law. Uh, hindi pwedeng ipagbenta, for example, ang ang isang tao because that, again, that is against the law. And of course, this also against morals and good customs. So, those are uh, those are yung valid, ano natin, valid objects of contracts. Ano yung mga hindi valid objects of contracts? Uh, first, future inheritance. Hindi mo ipa pwedeng ipagbenta yung isang bagay na pa ipapamana pa lang sa'yo. Okay? Hin dapat, uh, para, kasi yung karapatan mo doon, andari, uh, bibenta mo na yung lupa ng tatay mo, eh, ipapamana rin, mamamana ko rin naman yan ngayon. Ay, mamamana ko rin naman yan later. So, that's, that's not valid. Ano? Hindi siya valid na object ng contract because your right over your future inheritance is still in Kuwait. Kung baga, hindi sa Kuwait ha, in Kuwait. Uh, what do you mean in Kuwait? It is still imaginary. Ano? Hindi mo pa siya, uh, hindi mo pa siya actually ownership. So, you cannot transfer it. Hindi mo pa siya pwedeng maging subject ng contract. Okay. Uh, again, uh, not valid are yung impossible things or services. Gaya nga nang nasabi natin kanina, yung mga bagay na hindi naman possible na mangyari or mga services na hindi naman, pwede, hindi naman possibly pwedeng provide, uh, those are not valid objects of, con of contracts. For example, um, uh, although I consider this uh, in, in, ano, ha, impossible, pero siguro things may, at times may change later. Uh, for example, I will give you 1 million pesos 
uh, uh, pero you will have to uh, remove yung tubig sa buong Pacific Ocean. Of course, it's impossible service, right? So really, there's no object there. Uh, I mean, the the object there is not valid because that is something that is a service that is impossible. Okay, and the right to receive support. Hindi mo pwedeng uh, ipag hindi mo pwedeng gawing object ng contract yung karapatan mo na makareceive ng support. Why? Kasi it's like uh, selling your life or your source of life. Ano? Para mong binibenta na rin yung ikaw buhay mo. So, it's not a valid object of contract by express provision of law. Hindi mo, siya, hindi mo pwedeng uh, uh, i-waive yung right to receive support mo uh, for a fee, mga ganyan, or whatever. Basta hindi siya pwedeng maging subject ng contract. Okay, so the third uh, requisite of uh, contracts is cost or consideration. Uh, depends kung ano yung tawag nyo dyan. Uh, I mean, it defend, it, 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 this, these are interchangeable anyway, so it could be cost or consideration. So cost or consideration are, uh, is the essential or more proximate purpose which the contracting parties have in view at the time of entering into the contract. So, uh, what are why are why are they entering into that contract to begin with? Ano ang kapalit ng oh, ay kumbaga, ano yung kapalit ng object na uh, ano yung kapalit ng object na na ibibigay nila? So what is the uh, what is the consideration? Uh, kumbaga, what is the consideration that they are thinking about when when they entered into the contract? So, yun yung tinatawag na cost or consideration. Uh, here, uh, the requisites of cost or consideration are uh, it must be present or existent, it must be true or real, and it must be lawful. Parang sa object lang din. So, uh, it must be, again, it must be present or existent, it must be true or real, and it must be lawful. Okay, here, uh, in bilateral con in, in in bilateral obligations the cost for one is the object for the other so uh kung ano kung if both parties are debtors and creditors of each other for example uh yung cost or consideration depends really on whose point of view you are looking at pero pwedeng maging pareho yung uh pwedeng mag yung pwedeng yung isang bagay or yung isang service could be uh, the could be the ano could be the uh, consideration and at the same time the object depende sa kung kaninong point of view yun if it's from the point of view of the creditor or uh, maybe yung isa ay yung object yung isa ay yung consideration pero from the point of view of the debtor pwedeng yung uh, the object um, the object is the well from doing sa object ni creditor could be the consideration for the debtor. So, in bilateral obligations, it's really interchangeable. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, yung almost the same yung, uh, I mean, it's the same rather, yung requisites ni, uh, ni, ni consideration or ni cost sa object. They must both be present and existed, they must be true or real, they must be lawful because pwede sila maging interchangeable. Okay. And it could be onerous, uh, remuneratory, or gratuitous. It is onerous kapag uh, yung it is onerous kapag it is a thing for another. Kumbaga, uh, I give you something, you you return something of value sa akin din. For example, I give you I, I give you yung ano I give you. A, I, I give you my cell phone. You give me a uh, you give me a phone. Maganyan. Uh, remuneratory. Uh, ito naman for uh, parang uh, remuneration for uh, past services. Kung baka payment for past services. So kung ano na yung mga ano kung ano na yung for example nagtrabaho siya for you for a month. Ganyan, sasawuran mo siya ng ng a certain amount of compensation. Yun yung, yun, yung, ano, yun yung consideration doon. It could be remuneratory. Kung baga parang you give something in exchange for, uh, you give exchange, in, uh, you give something in exchange for the service that was rendered to you. 
Uh, and uh, it can also be gratuitous. By gratuitous, we mean uh, it is uh, it is given out of yung goodwill ng tao. It is somehow a donation. Ano? Walang, in essence, wala siyang kapalit. Uh, Kung baga, yung you give something dahil gusto mo, and siguro ang pwede na lang na maging ano dun, maging consideration dun is yung good feeling that you feel after you uh, after you donate something or after you give something. So, yun. Yun yung, yun yung cost or consideration. Again, we go back. So, so in a contract, we uh, we look at yung consent, object, and consideration. If these three are if these three exist, then that is considered as a contract. Okay? So, yun yung uh, yun yung COC na tinatawag natin. We should always bear that in mind. Okay? So, uh, let's give an example siguro to illustrate that point. Uh, I will buy your horse. Uh, sige, uh, kunwari, let's, uh, ano, mas, ma- mas maigi siguro if this is, uh, if this is a conversation. Ano? Kunwari ako, uh, o oh, pare, uh, bilhin ko na yung kabayo mo, 14, uh, 14,000. Okay? Uh, yung pare ko, sabi niya, yes, sige, bilin mo na. Yung pagsabi niya ng yes is already an, in, uh, uh, a, an indication of consent. So, nag-consent na siya doon. The object is the horse and the uh, the consideration is yung 14,000 na ibabayad ko sa kanya. So, in that case, that is, a con- that, that is already a contract. It's as simple as that. Ganun lang tignan uh, yung kontrata. Music